Alex, you've been expanding the Relay Ventures franchise beyond the Canadian borders into the U.S. and beyond. How's the competitive dynamic evolved since you've expanded? In 2011, we made the decision to open up an office in California. Uh, it was based on the fact that we look for the best deals. We don't just look for Canadian deals. And in order to benchmark Canadian deals against what's best, we felt like we had to open up an office in the Valley. Uh, it's brought on uh, a lot of other great things for the fund as well. So now we have a place where people can hang their hat uh, when they're down in the valley. We've got a network down there um, of advisors. We've got a network of, you know, strong network of other investors that we're co-investing with that are based in the valley. It's been great for us. When you think about the founders that you've got in Canada in the portfolio and beyond in the portfolio, what are the strengths and weaknesses you've been able to identify over the years? So every founder we invest in has a real element of persistence. That's number one. Founders have to risk everything based on their self-confidence. So that's, you know, that's number one. Persistence is extraordinarily important. Uh, I'd say every single one of them has been, are, are extraordinarily resourceful, especially, especially the successful ones. So they're not afraid to fail. Um, and when they fail, I just heard this great, uh, great person speak. She said, when great people fail, they fail wisely. And so what does that mean? It means that they're failing um, because they're testing multiple things at the same time. And so they know that if one thing, if one chip uh, drops, then they've got others that are propping up the business. Can you give me an example of what you mean by resourcefulness? Here's, here's number one. Business is not doing it. The growth velocity calms down. Um, and so you've got a business that just has done this. It's take off, taken off and it's accelerating like crazy. And what happens is that the market that the company is selling to just dries up. So it might be that they're a startup for startups, as an example, because they're your earliest adopters, their buying patterns uh, are very frequent and very quick, and you can identify who your target market is very quickly because they're part of your peer group. And you get off to a great start. You get off to an amazing start, and the company's growing, you know, triple digits each year, um, and even sometimes even more. And then you get three years into the business, and all of a sudden, things have stalled. Um, and so a, re a wonderful, resourceful entrepreneur would dig deep, try to look at the playing field, and identify very quickly two, three of their next target markets and try to turn either the product or the service that they're offering to that and redirect it to that market to accelerate growth So again. leverage the infrastructure you've already built, leverage the systems and technology you've already built, find a new market to sell it into. If you can, or find additional products to sell to your existing customers. But all the while, you've got to test multiple things, right? Life is about an A-B test. And it's always about figuring out what's working better than the last thing and actually trying new ideas again. Um, and so that's what, I th that's what I mean by, by being really resourceful. Relay Ventures has got a great track record rolling, but you've definitely obviously made some mistakes as all of us do as investors. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the biggest failure you've had and, and how did you overcome it? We have a portfolio theory, so we're a little bit luckier than the entrepreneurs that fail. Um, so that's, you know, that's how we sort of overcome things. Um, and we overcome things also by uh, not trying to repeat the same mistake twice. Not make the same investment mistake twice. Exactly. So after we've had a failure, we sit around as partners. We do a real deep postmortem on where the failures were, what the triggers for the failure, and really try to identify what we should have seen, the pattern we should have seen at the uh, time we made the investment that actually came true and was And much so what can a demise. founder take away from that? It, what, what lessons can you share for a founder that had that experience? Well, it, that, that self-confidence isn't always the answer, right? That there are other options and other, other opportunities. And yes, like you've got to tune out the noise. Again, you've been through this, right? You're getting people whispering in each year. Sure. Some people are yelling in each year and everybody's got the next best idea. Everyone's pulling you in a million yeah. different directions. But you know what? At the end of the day, we back the founder. We live and die by the founder. They can make the decisions that they want to make inside of the business in terms of who they're hiring, et cetera. But at the end of the day, they've got to be able to balance the noise that they're hearing, take the advice that they're hearing and maybe change course if that's the case. That you can't run a business with blinders on. You have to be open-minded. Um, we don't always have the best answers, but we may have somebody in our network that can provide those answers.